Cosmology, the subject of the past and present and future of our own dear universe. Just one concept in this uh, section, Hubble's Law. The galaxy is expanding. There's irrefutable evidence that the galaxy is expanding. How do we get that evidence? The answer, the answer is the Doppler effect. As we looked at distant galaxies, those distant galaxies show a redshift, meaning a shift towards longer wavelengths and shorter frequencies, lower frequencies. And that indicates that that object is moving away from us. The farther we look away from us, the faster these distant galaxies are receding away from us. So the idea is if, if this is us here on Earth, then we look out, you know, um, several billion, uh, one billion light years, for example, then you'll see at that distance things are moving away from us at a certain speed. If we double the distance, we go out two billion light years, for example, the galaxies at that double distance are going to be moving twice as fast as they were at one billion light years. So everything's going away, moving away from us. And you say, well, that must mean that we're the center of the universe. And I say, nice try. But if you look at it from the perspective of this guy here, that's a billion light years away from us, he says, well, I'm not moving. I'm just stationary. <laughs> Relativity, right? So he's not moving, but this guy is moving in this direction uh, at a, a, a less of a, of a speed than he, than he was from Earth, and Earth is moving in the opposite direction. So no matter where you look in the universe, where, wherever your perspective is on whatever galaxy you happen to reside, everything's moving away from you at a speed that gets faster and faster the farther you look. And um, this is the Hubble law. And this is one thing that made Hubble um, famous, and one reason why he, the uh, Hubble Space Telescope was named after him. He looked at measurements of light reaching the Earth from distant galaxies. He found the light was Doppler shifted toward lower frequencies, longer wavelengths, redshift, lower frequencies, and then found that the Doppler shift increased with increasing distance, implying that recessional, by recessional we mean it means moving away from us and uh, with increasing distance from the Earth. So the, this V represents the speed of recession. So that's the speed that we're looking at here. It gets greater the farther you are away, and d is the distance to the galaxy from the Earth. So that's the distance here. As you increase the distance, if you go to 2d, then you're going to be at 2 times the speed. So that speed and the distance to the galaxy are directly proportional to each other, and the constant of proportionality is called the Hubble constant. And its value is 0.022 meters per second per light year. So if you go out one light year further, then those speeds are going to increase by 0.022 meters per second. It's not a lot. And a light year is a long distance. But we're talking about a very, very big universe here. The, um, the universe is 13.7 billion years old. That's the age of the universe, according to the latest measurements. That means that if you look 13.7 billion light years away, that you will be seeing the universe as it existed at the time the universe was first created. 
because as you look further and further back in the universe, you're seeing things. It takes longer and longer for the light to travel from those locations to you, and you're seeing the, the universe as it existed earlier and earlier in its history. Once you get out to 13.7 billion light years, you're at the place where it took light 13.7 billion years to get to you, and uh, that's how long the universe has existed. So in fact, if you, if you think of, our, of the Earth being right here, and you look out uh, at a sphere whose radius is 13.7 billion light years, this is called the observable universe. This is the part of the universe that we can observe. Because outside of this, uh, nothing existed. Well, there's no way for light fr from an object that exists out of this sphere to get to you during the lifetime of the universe. It takes longer than the lifetime of the universe. It doesn't mean there's not something out there. In fact, the Hubble Space Telescope is plenty powerful enough to see objects at 20 billion light years away. But guess what? It sees nothing. Why? Because you can't see something if, if there's no way for the light to get to you in order for you to be able to see it. So this is our observable universe. Uh, is that the entire universe? No. The universe apparently, uh, the latest measurements of supernova explosions indicate that the universe is in fact infinite. So if you're here at the Andromeda galaxy instead of being at the Earth, your observable universe will overlap at, uh, from your perspective at the Andromeda galaxy with the observable universe from Earth. And everyone in the universe will have its, his own unique observable universe. All right, so that's the Hubble. Um, and it's consistent with an age of the universe of 13.7 billion light years. So the universe is expanding. That, that is irrefutable that the universe is expanding. Uh, too many measurements to, um, to, to deny that. How did it get that way? Well, here's where you have to ask questions. Well, if it's this big now, how did it get that big? And so um, you backtrack in time and you say, there must have been a big bang. And so at the time of the big bang, the theories show that there was a unified force, that there was no, uh, there was no such thing as gravity, strong nuclear, weak nuclear, or electromagnetic forces. All those were one single unified force. And that as the universe got bigger and got cooler, so initially its temperature was 10 to the 32 Kelvin. That's a big temperature. That's very hot. And its age was 10 to the minus 43 seconds. These different, uh, as it cooled, so this is a timeline from the Big Bang to now, which is 13.7 uh, billion years. One by one, these uh, forces froze out from the unified force. We first got gravity that started to play a role, then the strong nuclear, then the weak nuclear, and then the electromagnetic force. And now all these different forces have their different identities. And uh, a very important point in the development of the universe was this uh, point at about 500,000 years. Now this was 500,000 years from the Big Bang. So the universe was 500,000 years old instead of being 13.7 billion years old. But at this point, neutral hydrogen and helium began forming. Before this point, you had electrons and protons roaming around. It was hot enough for the electrons and protons not to be able to join together to form molecule, neutral molecules. And so with electrons and protons going around, they deflected the photons, particles of light, and you couldn't see anything through because they kept deflecting the photons. But once neutral hydrogen and helium formed, then it's like the air here. We have neutral oxygen and nitrogen and carbon dioxide. I can see through the air because there aren't any electrons and protons on their own to deflect that light. So this is when the universe became transparent. Uh,
at this point here, at about the 500,000 year mark. And photons, particles of light, that happen to be moving in a particular direction when the universe became transparent to photons. Now, since that time, they've just been going through space in whatever direction they happen to be going in at the time that the universe became transparent to photons. And they've been traveling in the universe ever since. What happened to those photons? And the answer uh, was found in 1965 by Penzias and Wilson. They discovered a cosmic microwave background radiation using this horn antenna. Um, the, the story goes that there were pigeon droppings on this antenna and they were thinking that this, they found this spurious signal and they thought, well, maybe it's the pigeon droppings that's causing a spurious signal. And uh, they cleaned out the pigeon droppings and they could still see the spurious signal. No matter where they pointed this antenna, they got this signal of a background uh, radiation even if they weren't pointing at a star. Now those photons that I talked about before, that, that whatever direction they were going in when the universe became transparent to photons, they have been going in that same direction ever since, unless they happen to run into a star or a planet, in which case they're gonna get deflected. But we're just talking about the ones that are streaming throughout deep space and heading on in whatever direction, some this way, some that way, some in another way. And, um, so an earlier prediction in 1948 by Alpha and Herman um, had predicted that there would be some background, a microwave background radiation based on those photons that have been traveling through our universe. So what's happened to those photons as the universe has expanded is that the photon wavelengths have expanded along with the universe. So the universe is expanding you have to think about the photon now being a wave. Think about it as light instead of a particle now for the moment. That wavelength is increasing as the fabric of the universe is, increase, is uh, increasing in size. You have to think in terms of general relativity now. Think four dimensionally. The wavelength has been increasing. The frequency has been decreasing. The energy has been decreasing because the energy is uh, Planck's constant time the times the frequency. And the result is the cosmic microwave background radiation. This is the radiation that was measured by Penzias and Wilson in 1965, uh, except that this is a much more uh, accurate measurement of this. In fact, this is the most precisely measured black body spectrum in nature. These are the actual measurements, these uh, plus symbols here. And, um, this corresponds to a black body curve with a temperature of 2.7 degrees Kelvin. This, uh, the, the green curve here is the theoretical curve for black body spectrum. The red uh, plus symbols are the data from this COBE satellite. And I think you'll agree that they agree extremely well with each other. It's one of the triumphs of the modern physics. Um, so what does this mean to you and me? It means that the temperature of the universe right now is 2.7 degrees. Uh, that's this number right here, 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. You say, well, wait a minute, deep space is just deep space. It doesn't have a temperature. It has to have mass to it to have a temperature. I say, uh uh, no, sir. Uh, the fabric of the universe itself has a temperature of 2.7 degrees. And the, the other curious thing, and so this is evidence of, of the fact that this, this is the remnant of the occurrence back at 500,000, at age 500,000 years, this right here, where the universe became transparent to photons. We're seeing the remnant of that early, early time in the, in this early stage in the, in the development of the universe. And we're seeing this, um, so this is evidence that the universe has been expanding, has been uh, the, the wavelength, uh, the temperature's been decreasing, the wavelength, the wavelength has been increasing, et cetera. I was actually a professor at, at West Virginia University when I finally understood, and there was a talk, a colloquium talk, by a visitor 
who said there's no place in the universe that you can point to where the Big Bang occurred. You can't say, Big Bang occurred right up there or over here. Because, why? Because the Big Bang occurred everywhere. There's no center or boundary to our infinite universe. We have a center and a boundary to our observable portion of the universe, but there's no center or boundary to the universe. And so it doesn't make any sense to talk about where the Big Bang occurred. It occurred everywhere. That's why when Penzias and Wilson pointed their horn antenna in any direction, they saw a cosmic microwave background coming from every direction. And seeing this uh, remnant from the early uh, creation of our universe from every direction. Um, does this necessarily uh, ab eliminate the possibility of a, of, of a divine creation? I'll leave that for you to decide. I don't think so. That um, a Big Bang and, and, a, and a creator could, could, be, could coexist. So with that, we will call it a day.